Hey everybody, welcome to Nassau Churches. Hey everybody, welcome to Nassau Churches Youth Group Service. We are so glad that you are joining us for Sunday for another beautiful day in the Lord, and it's definitely cooling down right now. The uh, fall season is definitely upon us, and I hope you are all doing very well. And before we begin the service, let me pray so that we can ask for the Lord's blessing in this time. Uh, Lord, we thank you for this day where we could come before you to worship, a day we should never take for granted. I ask, Lord, that you will be with all of us. Forgive us for our sin, Lord, especially if we are here and we are broken and we are in desperately needing your cleansing and your healing. We pray that you'll extend that grace to us. So now, Lord, as we are about to come before you in worship, we pray that you'll fill us with your joy with your passion so that we can continue to walk in the faith and continue to grow and to love you with all our hearts. So fill us at this time with a heart of praise as we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Well, thank you, Faith, once again for leading us in a time of worship. And if you guys are joining us right now for our YouTube video, I want to say once again, welcome to Nassau Church's Youth Group Sunday Service. And I'm so glad that you are joining and that you are here and that you want to worship uh, the Lord together on this Sunday. So God bless you all. I'm having a great time with you on Friday nights, just being able to get to know you more every single week and praying for the day in which we will all get together soon so that we can do life together. So before we look at today's message, I want to remind you guys, keep up with your Senna books. If you have not gotten to November 1 yet, then please let me know. You can drop a comment in the video. You can uh, email us at nasungenglishministry at gmail.com and we'll get a November book out to you. This uh, month we're going to be on First and Second Thessalonians, which are really great little books in the New Testament. So these are um, books that you definitely want to read and study. And it's in here. It's in here so you get to look at it every day. So make sure you guys are on top of this. All right, so with that being said, now we are going to look into today's message together. We are continuing on in the book of Revelation. How exciting is that? We are almost through with the book of Revelation. And today we are going to be going through quite a lot of material today, actually, because we're going to be on chapter 21. We're going to start on verse 9, but then we're going to go all the way to chapter 22, verse 5. All of this is going to explain what the uh, New Jerusalem looks like in heaven. So this is going to be the second half of the heaven study that I began last week. So I hope that you are all paying attention and that you'll be very inspired by this message today of what we see here in the Bible. So let's pray and let's ask for the Lord to speak to us at this moment. Lord, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for giving this to us so that it can give us hope. It can show us how to be saved. It shows us, Lord, the hope that we have for those who are in Christ by faith. We pray that we'll never give up on this hope, but rather we will persevere, that we'll continue to have faith and continue to make it all the way to the end because there is such a great future ahead for us. So Lord, as we are about to come before you now, we pray that you'll speak to us and that these words will come alive in our hearts, Lord, and that it will produce change in us so that we long for heaven, so that we live for the things of heaven and that we do our best to draw other people to come to heaven with us in evangelism. So we thank you, Lord. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you'll speak to us through this message. And all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Once again, we are in Revelation chapter 21, verse 9. So last week I talked about how the Lord was creating a new earth that's going to be like unlike anything ever like the old earth we think you know it's so great but the new earth is going to be even greater because it's glorious there's no sin whatsoever in the new earth it's going to basically be a place where we will be with the lord god forever and this is what heaven is so last week i talked about the glories of heaven all the benefits of heaven like how there will be no more pain and suffering and tears and in today's passage we're going to look specifically at the new jerusalem which is this city that comes out of heaven and it lands on basically the new earth and it becomes like the capital city of the new earth so let's see what john has to say the apostle john beginning in verse 9 he says then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and spoke with me saying come here i will show you the bride the wife of the lamb so this passage begins by this angel who was one of the angels that poured out, you know, the one of the seven bulls onto the world during the tribulation period. So he he's used by God to bring judgment upon Babylon, but he's also used by God to pronounce his blessings upon like this really great city that we all have to look forward to. So he was telling John here in verse 10 to come because he wants to show him what the city is going to look like. It says, he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Her brilliance was like a very costly stone, as a stone of crystal clear 
jasper. Wow. So we see this new Jerusalem, which is in heaven right now. One day when God creates a new world, it's going to come down and it's going to be so, so beautiful. It says that this thing, it's like the stone. It's made, her brilliance was like a stone, a stone of like crystal clear jasper. That's how beautiful it is. And look at how these walls look, according to verse 12. It said, it had a great and high wall with 12 gates and at the gates, 12 angels and the names are written on them, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the sons of Israel. So we know that the city is going to have 12 different gates. So there's going to be about like three gates on each side, north, south, west, and east. All three of these gates that are super high. And it says that every one of them had basically the names of the tribes of Israel written on it. as kind of like a memorial to um, the, the 12 tribes of Israel. And then it says there were three gates on the east and three gates on the north and three gates on the south and three gates on the west. And the wall of the city had 12 foundation stones. And on them were the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So not only do these gates have the name of the 12 tribes of Israel, but also the 12 apostles. So we see like Old Testament and New Testament right here in these gates. And it says, the one who spoke with me had a golden measuring rod to measure the city and its gates and its walls. And the city is laid out as a square and its length is as great as its width. And he measured the city with the rod 1500 miles and its length and width and height are equal. And he measured its walls and 72 yards according to human measurements which are also angelic measurements. Wow, do you see how big the city is? He's saying that the city is like 1,500 miles every single way, like this way, this way, and you know what, guys? Even this way as well. So it's kind of like a cube shape, the city. That's so interesting. Do you know how wide 1,500 miles is? It's kind of like if we were to start at one end, which would be like in Florida, and then the other end would be like in Colorado. That's how wide this thing is. Amazing, isn't it? And then imagine going 1,500 uh, miles all the way into the sky. That is pretty high, don't you guys think? Because if an airplane goes up to the sky, it goes about 30,000 feet up. That's about like 5.6 miles up. So that means the city is gonna surpass that 300 times just into the sky. Wow, this is a really big city. I mean, how on earth could you build anything like that in our world right now. You can't because this is something that belongs to the Lord God. Since God is the one who creates, he can create anything spectacular and he's going to do it right here as well. So not only are these, you know, is the size really extraordinary, but also the material that the city is made out of. In verse 18, it says the material, the wall was Jasper. And the city was pure gold, like clear glass. So the material was made of jasper, which I believe might be like some sort of a diamond, you know, diamond basically. And it also says here that it, the city was pure gold, like clear crystal. Have you guys ever seen gold that was like transparent? That was like see-through, that was like clear as crystal? I don't even know if that exists in the world, but Basically, in the new earth, that's the way it's going to be designed. In the new Jerusalem, it's like it's going to be made of pure gold that's like translucent. You can see through it. Isn't that so amazing? Uh, verse 19 says that the foundation stones of the city wall were adorned with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation stone was jasper. The second, sapphire. The third, uh, cal chalcedony. I think that's how you say it, Chalcedony. And the fourth was Emerald, and the fifth, Sardonyx, and the sixth, Sardius, the seventh, Chrysolite, the eighth, Beryl, the ninth, Topaz, the tenth, Chrys Chrysoprase. <laughs> I'm butchering all this. The eleventh, Jacinth, the twelfth, Ameth Amethyst. Amethyst, yeah. So basically, you're probably asking, what is all that? Unless like you're a really big fan of like gems, you're probably not gonna know what that is. But these are like all the really 
beautiful gems of this world that is going to be the foundation of this of this earth basically and verse 21 says the 12 gates were 12 pearls each one of the gates was a single pearl and the street of the city was pure gold like transparent glass wow it can't get any more amazing than that because it's saying that each of these gates was like a pearl imagine that a single pearl that was like really huge you know pearls during this time was like the most ancient commodity i mean right now what is it like a diamond or something that's the most valuable but back then pearls were like the most precious thing you can have and it's saying here that this new jerusalem it's going to be like the gates are going to be made of pearls. Basically, what it's saying is it's going to be made of the best quality, best material imaginable. And the Lord God is the one who's going to make all this. So this is get you excited for the new earth. Because it should, because this is like what's in store for all those who have repented of their sin and placed their faith in Jesus Christ. This is what we should be looking for in the future. And this is what a city looks like when God is the architect. When God is the one who builds it, this is what the city looks like. Impressive. So I hope that you guys are right with the Lord because if you are, this is what's awaiting for you in the future. But not just that, but this place is gonna be so holy. Look at what verse 22 says. I saw no temple in it for the Lord God, the Almighty, and the lamb are its temple. And the city has no need of the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God has illumined it, and its lamp is the lamb. So this new, this new city, it has no church buildings. It has no temples there. Do you know why? Because there's no need for it anymore, because Jesus is there. So we can see him, we can talk to him directly. That's why there's no need for a temple. And also what's not there is like a sun and a moon. There's no need for a sun and a moon because sun and the moon, what it does is it regulates the cycle of the ocean and you know the skies with the rain and everything. There's no more sea in the new earth. And plus the Lord God, he's gonna be the sun. You know, his glory is gonna blaze out of the new Jerusalem all around so that it is just blazing bright everywhere. That is so amazing, isn't it? In verse 24, it talks about who's going to be in there. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. So it shows here how there are going to be so many people who are going to be a part of it, especially like all the kings, those whom the Lord honored, you know, to give them the reward so that they can rule during the millennial kingdom. And in verse 25, it says, In the daytime, for there will be no night there. Its gate will never be closed, and they will bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. And nothing unclean, and no one who practices abomination and lying shall ever come into it, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. So it's clear, guys. No sinners will enter into it. Those who have died in their sins, those who have not been forgiven, they will not make it into this place. Because everybody thinks in the world, yeah, I'm going to go to heaven when I die. But not really. Because this thing is saying that heaven is going to be so holy that unless you've been made right with God, unless you've been uh, born again and you have your new glorified body that's fit for heaven, you're not going to make it in there. And the only way we make it in here is if we believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. If we turn from our sin and place our faith in Jesus, we have our ticket in here and God is going to make us righteous so that we can fit in here. But everybody else who rejected Jesus they're going to die in their sins. They're still going to love sin. So that's why they're going to be in hell and they're not going to be in heaven. Because this place is too holy for people who love sin to live inside of. But us, if we have believed in Jesus, one day we are going to love God perfectly. God is going to transform us so that we can fit in this new world. And look at what other benefits this new world has. Verse uh, chapter 22 begins a new section. It says, Then he showed me a river of the water of life, clear as crystal, coming from the throne of God and of the Lamb, in the middle of its street. On either side of the river was the tree of life, bearing twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. 
So somewhere within the city, there's like a beautiful river. And it says here that there's also on either side of the river, what's called the tree of life. Does that sound familiar to you guys? If you guys remember that tree of life was in the garden of Eden in Genesis when Adam and Eve lived there. And the Lord God said, you cannot eat of the tree of life. That's why they were banned from the garden. They ate of the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And then they brought about a sinful nature upon themselves. But God says, you cannot eat of the tree of life. But then in the future, those who are in heaven, they can eat of the tree in life. They have eternal life. So this tree is going to basically symbolize the eternal life that they have when we are in Jesus Christ. It says there, there's no more curse whatsoever. That's what verse 3 says. And the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it. And his bondservants will serve him. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. One of the greatest joys that we will have in heaven is that we're going to see the Lord God face to face. We're going to be able to talk with him. We're going to be able to ask him questions. We're going to be able to serve him. That's the reason why we should be looking forward to heaven because we're going to be with the Lord God and we're going to see him. And in the last verse, it says, there will no longer be any night and they will not have need of the light of a lamp nor the light of the sun because the Lord God will illumine them and they will reign forever and ever. So once again, the city's not going to have any night. In this city, it says that the light of a lamp nor the light of a sun is not going to be needed because the Lord God, he's going to be the light because from him is going to be all the glory to light up the whole city. So this is really quite a spectacular sight. But the reason John is telling all of this to us is to get us excited about our future. So in closing, guys, I don't know how you guys feel when you read this description of heaven. Maybe to some of you guys, it's like very mysterious. Maybe to some of you, it's like really such a wonderful thing to imagine. But then, you know, maybe some of you are kind of a little bit, you know, afraid to go there. It sounds so different than the life that I live right now. But the Lord God says that this is a place you want to go. There's going to be no regrets here. Everything in this world is like nothing. It's like dirt compared to what's coming in the new earth. But remember, not everybody gets there. In fact, most of the people who has ever lived will not be in heaven because they have sinned against God and they need to be punished for it. So that is why they are in hell forever. Because sin will only earn you death and eternal punishment. That is why the miracle is in Jesus Christ because in him, he took away our sins when he died on that bloody cross so, so many years ago. So that everything you should have been punished for in hell, Jesus took it upon himself as your substitute so that you don't have to suffer for your sins, so that you can be forgiven. He is resurrected, which means that one day when you trust in Jesus Christ, you will resurrect as well. You will have eternal life and this will be your dwelling place forever. So if you're here today and if you, and if you have not believed in Jesus Christ yet, then use today to turn from all your sin and place your faith in Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, and God will save you. And, and you have the hope of this promise. I hope you do that today. So don't ignore this message. Because, you know, I've already talked to you guys about what hell is like, and now today I'm talking to you about what heaven is like. Both of these should cause you to really take this message seriously. And really to get right with the Lord God while you still can. And if you are a Christian and you have given your life to the Lord and you believe in Jesus and know, you know you're gonna go to heaven when you die, God bless you. All I can say to you is continue to persevere in your faith. Continue to live for Jesus. Don't give up even though the world is gonna tempt you to sin and to think like all the best stuff is here and there's nothing else out there in the afterlife. Your best life is not now. Your best life is coming in the future, in the new heavens and in the new earth. So use today to serve the Lord, to serve the church, to reach out to unbelievers with the gospel, to invite them into this new place. That is your mission. 
Let's do that while we still can because we don't know when Jesus is going to come back in the rapture. So with the little time that we have left, let's do whatever we can in order to glorify God and to bring people into this new earth. Amen? Let's pray. What an astounding vision you have given us, Lord, of this new earth. There's no words that can describe, not even John could really describe how glorious and amazing this place looks, how holy it is. Right now, Lord, you are preparing the church for this moment. Everything that we are experiencing right now, everything that you are doing in our lives is in preparation for the new earth. So we pray, Lord, that if that is us today, Give us the strength so that we can obey you and to serve you and to bring other people to Jesus Christ who still need to be saved. And Lord, I also would like to pray for anybody who's watching. If they have not believed in Jesus yet, Lord, I pray you'll grant them faith today. Grant them the faith so that they can be saved and that they can know that if they were to die today, they will be a part of this new earth. O oh, gracious God, continue to do your work within this church to bless us, to provide for us, and to use us to be your people to reach many others with the gospel. And all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Well, that's it for our Sunday service here. And I uh, want to remind you guys once again, um, continue to just be faithful to read this and to study this every day. And also continue to pray. Pray for our church. Pray for the city of Los Angeles that there will be uh, health and healing and restoration. And uh, just continue to pray for the leaders of our nation. And uh, pray that Jesus will return very soon as well. So God bless you all. And I will see you on Friday.